Um, but, you, you know, um, I, I know that that's your business and, and what you teach, but can you give us a, just the 15 second uh, ad, advice from, you know, what you guys are doing and how people can get a clue? Well, I think you're right. Um, I think that sometimes when you make a lot of money, you just throw it around and don't know where it's going. And, and what I look at this is, is on the long term perspective. You know, um, if you save two hundred thousand dollars a year in your business, you'll reinvest that ten years from now. You'll have another four or five million dollars. That's the beginning of generational wealth. I mean, just ten years, you're creating an extra four or five million dollars. And what I talk about, as I always give the example of a friend of mine who's, who's from Denmark originally, and he knows all these wealthy people, quote unquote, who they're all partners that you know the big four accounting firms. They make three hundred thousand euros a year. Half of that goes to tax, if not more, and then the rest of it goes to Audi SUV payments for their wife. Audi, you know, payments for themselves, uh, private school fees for their kids. Uh, they have a house in the right neighborhood. And it's all about that, um, you know, that experience. They end up with zero. And then they rely on, guess what? The government to take care of them. Oh, what are you going to do when you're retired? Oh, the government will take care of me because they're excellent. And they're very well known for their ability to manage money over there at the government. Uh, so just rely on them. Don't save anything. Don't take matters into your own hands. And so uh, what I've said when I lowered my tax rate from 43 to, to about 1% was I used uh, offshore companies um, because I do business offshore. I personally live overseas. I don't, you know, I mean, I don't live in the United States and, and cheat the system and use all the services. I don't use the services. And now I'm not, I don't even have a passport. Um, so if you're willing to change your lifestyle, now there are ways, I mean, you know, there are certain ways to use offshore structures domestically for the average one man, you know, business, it's going to be very difficult. But if you're willing to make some adjustments to your lifestyle, then you can go where you're treated best, find a place that has a 0% tax rate, 2% tax rate, 5% tax rate. Uh, you know what? Here's what I say. Uh, very simply, Dubai, for example, in the United Arab Emirates has determined we've made the conscious decision. We have enough money. We're going to tax people at zero to grow our economy. Well, they're a government and they have that opinion. The U.S. government has the opinion that they should take nearly half your money in many cases. So both are governments. Why is one government not entitled to its approach and why are you not entitled to go there? Um, and so by using structures, by changing your lifestyle, you can, you can reduce your, uh, your rate. And I think with the way people are running businesses for, you know, right now, you don't need to be in any one particular place. Yeah. Very good point. Um, I love how direct you are and what you're, the value that you're providing to people. And I can see the value in picking up the book, Nomad Capitalists. Um, last words for our audience from you, because I think that they can find out a lot about reaching out to you and, and digging into your business, uh, through your website as well. Well, again, I think the number one thing is you need to do a personal inventory. Uh, I appreciate the, the compliment. I think being direct is something that to me just comes very naturally. I don't know any other way. And, and to our point about entrepreneurs, I think that the most frustrating people that I deal with are the, are the corporate kind of diplomatic minded people. They just can't say what they mean, but to get where you want to go, you've got to dig deep and you've got to say, Hey, is my girlfriend the one who's not letting me move so I can make an extra half a million bucks a year that I'm saving and I can live a better life. You know, is that stopping me? I see that all the time. Um, so you've got to do a personal inventory. What sacred cows are in your closet? Uh, from there, what I recommend we'll start with is I did write the book, Nomad Capitalist. You know, it's a little controversial. Um, uh, and so uh, I think it's a great place to start. Again, you're not going to get the magic, you know, beans because there are no magic beans that I can give to, you know, 20,000 book readers. Um, everything is, is, you know, very focused on your own situation. But you're going to get a lot of anecdotes, a lot of stories, a lot of what's possible, a lot of kind of broad ideas. And you can start to put together what this stuff looks like, not the way they say it in the movies where the guy's hiding the money in the Swiss bank account or putting the money on the boat. And it's not how it works. Right. There's a legal way to do it. So the book is a great place to start to open up your eyes. We have over 1500 blogs on nomadcapitalist.com. We've got 600 plus videos and counting on YouTube with new one every day. Um, and we offer a service for folks who are, um, you know, the high level entrepreneurs, six, seven, eight figures. Um, that we work with and we, we dig in and we go through probably several hundred different, very, you know, small factors to figure out what's your plan to get where you want to go. And that could be, I want to live outside of the U S and not pay any taxes. I want to live somewhere nice and pay a little taxes. I just want a second passport to make my investing easier. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go. And so I think the book is a great place to start. And then from there you can kind of dive deeper. Well, I appreciate that. 
Listen, I, I really appreciate the time for you to be on the show today. I think it's a ton of valuable information, not only on what we talked about today, but what is available to people through your website. And um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired to uh, reevaluate what I'm doing just on our brief conversation here. So th- thank you so much for that, Andrew. Hey, my pleasure. Great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's show. It is my pleasure and honor to interview all of the guests that have been on the Answer is Yes podcast. If you have enjoyed the show, please go on iTunes and subscribe, give a rating, or simply tell a friend about the show. We also believe in the message of our guests and the positive influence of their stories. As my own mentor and coach, David Meltzer, has taught me, spend some time every day thinking and writing about the things in your own life that you have more than enough of. You will find out how blessed we really are. Please visit my website, livelifedriven.com, for the latest updates about me and what I'm doing. Plus, I post a monthly blog about the many topics on this show. This podcast can also be found there. As I learned early on in life, what you believe is what you will achieve. Thanks, Mark Victor Hansen, and thank you, and have a great day.